Hello, thank you for joining us. My name is Kara Kroger and I'm a Sustainable Agriculture Specialist with the National Center for Appropriate Technology. In this video, I am joined by Tim Miller, owner of Millburg Farm in Kyle, Texas, just south of the city of Austin. Certified organic since 1989, the five-acre Millburg Farm is a one-man operation. For 30 years, Tim has used dryland farming techniques to provide one of the oldest CSA programs in the state. He uses hardy heirloom varieties to minimize his water needs, times plantings to the weather, uses trench composting with wood chips, and collects rainwater. In this video, Tim will share how he trench composts with wood chips to maintain the fertility of his dryland vegetable and fruit farm while capturing and storing moisture for his crops to grow year round. To give you a little bit more idea about my farm, uh, 31 years certified organic, I don't pump water from the aquifer. So I'm basically a dry land vegetable farmer, but also with bringing in rainwater. So I use about 6,000 gallons of saved rainwater and apply that water very specifically to plants. A way that I saw that we could add more moisture into the farm is utilizing wood chips. Uh, working for a tree company in 1984 in Austin, we dropped them off at the community gardens and at the community gardens I ended up working there for nine years and uh, had a uh, another farm that I was working at for six years and that one I started utilizing trenches and backfilling with wood chips because as we I just dug here if we can kind of see the different colorings this is moisture that's deep into the ground this is about almost a foot of wood chips and so what I'm gonna my plan is is I'm gonna run the tiller what I like to call down and back. I'm gonna go down this row, hit it one direction, and then I'll come back, and then this looser material, I'll scoop it up and add that to there. I'll still have lots of organic matter of wood chips in here, but this, these wood chips have been sitting here for almost two years now. So they should till up real nicely. Uh, what I've noticed in, in my farm, we have black clay soil, the weeds uh, are almost non-existent into wood chips. They do grow, all right, Bermuda grows in wood chips and so does Johnson grass, but they're easily pulled out of there. All right, so I think from a farmer's perspective, they make great walking material. They add so much organic matter into the soil. Uh, having the loss of uh, nitrogen deficiency from off of your greens, I don't see it have never seen that. I've grown great celery out here, dry land celery, and uh, great results. Uh, my greens don't have that uh, negativity with uh, sheet composting of uh, turnips on straight wood chips, works, but depending on the wood chips, uh, some pack down tighter than others. Talk a little bit about the Johnson grass and how you use the Johnson grass and um, and even the Bermuda grass to a certain degree to put back into the fields as well as organic matter. Okay, the Johnson grass, which uh, is a little bit behind me, uh, that material will get weed eated down and rake that, and but I'll rake the Johnson grass and cut it before the seed heads are viable. And then I'll add that to the trench and then I can put my old okra stalks, stalks, tomato stalks into here. The Bermuda is a different uh, enemy or, or ally. I think of it as an ally. Um, it keeps on coming back. Uh, there's almost two types of root systems on Bermuda. There's a dark colored root system, which is really the parent plant. And then you have the lighter, whiter stem, which does a lot of runners. And that's usually that first year's growth. So if you're attacking it just to remove the organic green matter, the new material, and incorporating that on a nice hot sunny day, you're going to kill that and then I'll let that air dry and then add that back into my trench. Excellent. So I'm heating it up. Basically I can heat up my trench by applying green material. You know, why would I want to heat up this trench? I mean this is a, a, a static compost pile. But in, in some cases, I want to heat this material up because I want to do maybe beans, one row of beans alongside this trench. I would rather do it closer to the grasses on that side. 
because the grasses are going to give me a little winter wind protection and uh, there's actually a trench right over there too but those grasses are growing in there and that is going to give me the heat effect all right from our northwest winds blowing this way the better place for beans in this kind of setup would be right on this edge mm. so that a freeze comes I have some devices that I would hold the plant uh, from being crushed by a row cover crop run the tiller over this trench take my row cover and quickly cover the trench and the beans and now I have beans for Thanksgiving All awesome right. You can do that with tomatoes as well. So it gets real tricky on logistics of everything, on incorporating trench composting. But it, it, it is definitely a proven method. I mean, this works for me, and I, I think I have it streamlined at my place. Tim, so now that you have uh, tilled it with your BCS, tell us a little bit about um, what you're going to do with it at this point. Okay, all right. So the trench material nicely loosened up, Johnson grass. And now you start to see remnants of this at the bottom of the trench. This was sunflowers, stalks. So when he dug so the trench, he lays down the sunflower yeah, stalks. Yeah, when I dug the trench, yes. Yeah. Just to hold the walls in place, mm -hmm. all right? And the trench stays always in place. It's not going to get removed. The other aspect is, because we live in central Texas, we can get a hurricane. All right, two years ago, we had 17 inches of rain. All right, so it is extremely important I have close to a mile and a half of trenches dug. They're all backfilled with wood chips. All right, so when the water comes off of the property into these terraces, they can come down into this trench because I can dam it off just right over here. All of the wood chips suck it up as moisture. And then I can use that material later into the course of the year because it has moisture laden compost. Absolutely, right? yes. And but if we get too much rain, then this trench could get uncovered totally. Throw it up on side here, and then I can run all of this water that gets trapped behind you, flows all the way down to the sunflower at the end, take a left, and go now down into further trenches. I can take water from up by my barn and move it all the way to the back of my field if mm -hmm. I need to. Awesome. So just by having, we're terraced, but at the same time, I have little check dams within the terraces. And I, it's an improvement on terraces for the small scale farmer. Yeah. That, you know, the Soil Conservation Service developed terraces, I'm not sure when, probably 1880s or so, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I just made refinements. I have what I call little check dams, little rock mounds in between. Yeah. And just for water conservation practices, I hold my water in the ground very nicely here. Every three feet, as I'll do two scoopfuls of compost there and then rough this back over again so it lays flat. But I'll use a different tool. This is a nice little shovel tool. I don't mind bending over and scooping with a smaller shovel. So you don't even really have to put that much back onto the bed. No. Yeah. No. This. Yeah. This. This is an extremely important amount of wood chips that I can utilize when the squashes are up about a foot tall, active, about three feet, mm -hmm. growing, vining. Then I can apply some more wood chip or compost to them as well as, as well as coming in and sifting some material out of here and using this into my potting operation. Mm -hmm. All right, instead of just having a five foot tall 
compile. It, it, it doesn't work on a small scale setup. This works far simpler for a small scale farmer. So I'm curious, you know, a lot of trench composting is done also with um, a vegetable compost or, or different things like that as yes. well. Yep. And I know that the wood chips are going to be probably more uh, helpful in facilitating the water storage and that type of thing. But if somebody wanted to incorporate vegetable compost or green green material or leaves or you know leaf um, tree leaves, would you have any suggestions for that? But leaves, um, I would I would typically put your bigger stalks at the bottom of the trench, all right, and then put in some grass clippings and then some leaves. I mean, it's a very pretty looking composting setup versus a big pile. And here in Texas, we tend to get fire ants into your piles if you don't turn them. And if you do a trench setup at a community garden or a school garden, it's a lot simpler for management wise and you don't get the fire ants in a trench. It just never happens. Good to know. In this section of the video, Tim will talk to us about an older wood chip trench that is further along in the composting process. This was tilled about a month ago, all right, and uh, we, right after a rain that we actually had here, about an inch and a half rain. So I tilled that, and then that was pulverized, and now it's at this state right now. This is wonderful material. All of this will all get applied to the top of this bed that's right here. Um, basically a keyhole garden. I have trenches on both sides of this so the vegetables that will be in here, uh, uh, soyo long cucumbers, that will wick up all of this moisture mm -hmm. from these trenches and have all of this additional uh, compost on top of that bed. So a solid stand if we fill up with, if we get a huge rain this side will not be filled in with wood chips. The water will get diverted and so permeate into the bed this direction. But the bed's high enough off the ground that I don't have any damage to the cucumbers. Awesome. And so you were just explaining to me that this right here, what we're looking at, the Johnson grass and everything, yes. that last just last year this was a bed of melons. Yes. And so this is just another example of how he's allowing these these grasses to, you know, these grasses that are not right. necessarily I mean, native, but are, you know, naturally right. naturalized I mean, you, you to this area. You can see where I've been weed eating to making sure that I don't have any viable seed heads. I can live with the rhizomes that are in this material. This stuff uh, in a pull out so simple, all right, and to decimate this bed if I wanted to, I would wear a pair of gloves and just pull this little block totally off take all of this material, lay this out in the full sun for the next uh, week, and then put it into this bare trench. Or, better yet, all right, in my case, we'll go over here to the pepper plant and give it a little crack. There, shade for my pepper. Awesome. As you can see, Tim has created a trench composting system that creates resiliency across his farm. We hope this video shows you firsthand the efficiency of this type of composting method. If you would like to try this method on your own farm, please see the link below to The Art of Trench Composting by Tim Miller. Additionally, if you have any further questions, please email me at karakay at incat.org. Thank you for watching.